Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 990 of the Juice Box Podcast. On today's show, I'll be speaking with Amy. She is the mother of two amazing young girls who have type 1 diabetes. While you're listening, please remember that nothing you hear on the Juice Box Podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan or becoming bold with insulin. If you'd like to save 40% off of joggers, sheets, towels, and all kinds of comfortable things, go to CozyEarth.com and use the offer code JUICEBOX at checkout to save 40%. Are you looking for a Dexcom? Go to Dexcom.com forward slash JUICEBOX. Use my link. Check it out. And don't forget, the 1,000th episode of the Juicebox Podcast is coming up very soon, and we'll be marking that special day with a re-release of a remastered Diabetes Pro Tip series, completely remastered for audio and re-released at episode 1,000. Don't miss the Juicebox series that started them all, the Diabetes Pro Tip series, completely remastered and coming soon at episode 1,000. If you're like me, you may be concerned that you're not getting the vitamins that you want every day. That's why I drink AG1. Every morning I get up, I take one scoop of AG1, put it in with some water, cold water, shake it up, and drink it down. That's how I get my day started. You could too. DrinkAG1.com forward slash juice box. Use that link to get five free travel packs and a year's supply of vitamin D with your first order. DrinkAG1.com forward slash juice box. Today's podcast is also sponsored by Touched by Type 1. This is a wonderful organization helping people living with type 1 diabetes, and all they want is for you to learn more about them. Go to touchedbytype1.org or find them on Facebook and Instagram. Honestly, I don't know why I said or. Do all three, Facebook, Instagram, and touchedbytype1.org. They're genuinely doing good things for people with type 1 diabetes. My name is Amy. I am mother to Zoe and Riley. They were diagnosed with diabetes in 2021, um, type one. And yeah, we are huge listeners of Juice Box Podcast and it's helped us a bunch. So we thought maybe we could connect and share some of what we've learned and a little bit about our story. Thank you so much for having us. Pleased that you're here. Can you do me a favor? Yeah. Give me one second. It's going to be noisy for a second. I'll be right back. Sure. I promise noisy. There that was. Hold on one (laughs) second. My son was applying for a job and he used my desk. So we moved everything off of my desk, including my whiteboard that I use while people are telling me their children's names and things like that. And I just had to pick it up and bring it back and wipe it off. And okay. He did get have a cheat sheet too. He got the job, by the way. Oh, yeah. It's exciting, except he's going to have to move to take it. So remind me what field he's in. He has a bachelor's degree in quantitative economics with a minor in mathematics that leans in a statistics direction. But he, I got tired. My brain just like zoned out while you were saying that. Yeah, yeah. And, but, <laughs> but but here's the thing: he doesn't want to really work in an office too much. So perfect, perfect job. So it looks like he's going to take a job doing uh, some stuff. He's trying to get into pro sports and do data analysis in pro sports. So it looks like he's oh. getting getting in that direction. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Amy, how old? Are Any you? particular sport? Baseball. I know I'm, I'm yeah. interviewing you now. No, no, it's fine. Uh, baseball, if you can. <laughs> hey, baseball. Listen, if okay. Someone's wor- listening right now, and they're the uh, the lead data analysis person for, like, you know, I don't know, the Rockies <laughs> or the Phillies or something like that. They should, uh, or any of them. He'd go anywhere. He's gotten. That's probably the one sport we don't watch in our house. <laughs> He's gotten. I was um, hoping you'd say football. Do you know someone who works in professional football? I don't. I was thinking the other way around. Like when he gets in, he can be my connection. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Amy. I don't think that's going to work out like that. (laughs) 
uh, you'd be, I get, maybe you wouldn't be surprised, but the people who listen to this podcast have been incredibly helpful lining him up with just conversations to have with people, trying to meet people, stuff like that. They've been really, really wonderful. He's had a, a number of really great phone conversations in industries where I don't even know if he was particularly interested. And it gives you an insight into who's listening to the podcast. So yeah. he, he had, um, I think I can just say it like roundabout, but he had a phone call with someone from the Secret Service to see if he would be interested in that. He's had a uh, a couple of other companies that I don't think he would have had a connection to if like lovely people from the podcast wouldn't have reached out and said, Hey, you know, I know the, ha- the hiring manager here, or if you, you know, I don't think I could get him a job, but he- here's a person if he spoke to could really help him understand how to apply his degree better. And, uh, one That's amazing. Lo- lovely woman named Michelle helped him completely revamp his, his resume, which was a big help because he put it together in more of a hip way. <laughs> <laughs> even in the house we're like i don't think i'd do that if i was you oh my it's goodness like i'm applying to all these jobs i'm never hearing back i'm overqualified for someone i'm like it's your resume and he's like it's not and then michelle came along and took his resume like literally for free on her own time and revamped it contacted him spoke with him told him how to fix it and he started getting like phone calls that right as soon as she did that I swear that writing resumes, like putting it together, it's like an art form because it, there's so many intricacies and like things to it that, you know, could be interpreted so many different ways by employers. Too much of this, too little of that it can just, they won't even take a second look at it. So it's, it's really, it's interesting. Yeah. Even just the format of it, I guess maybe they scan them and computers look at them first. So they sort of have to fit a format oh. for the computer to be like, this one's viable. So anyway, yeah. anyway, th- that's not, we're not here to learn how to get a job. <laughs> um, well, so, hey, you know, so let's go. Help Amy- somebody. I'm sure that he's not going to be the first that I'm sure people in the group help each other out so much. I'm sure he's not the first to help to be helped out like in that oh, sense. Oh, yeah, yeah. We did a thing the other night, all of us together online. I, I can probably just say this. It won't matter. The internet, like certain companies don't like it when you give things away, especially mm-hmm. medical supplies. Mm-hmm. But. Oh, yes. I yeah. did see that. Yeah, I, I it just I was in a very festive mood the other night, and I had a lot of medical supplies that we didn't need anymore. So my intention was to go online, find somebody who could really benefit from them, and give them to them. But then yeah. the people who were like, "Hey, you don't usually do this, but I have forty of these or ten of these or whatever," and I basically just set up a swap meet for a few yeah. for about an hour or two, and we must have covered like twenty families with stuff. And oh then, my goodness. Yeah. I didn't realize it was that many. That's yeah. awesome. I sent my stuff. I split my stuff up between three different families. Wow. And there's a, a family with a small kid now who's going to have an insulin pump for like, let me do the math. Um, honestly, might, might be able to use an insulin pump for like six months for free because of somebody I hooked him up with. So it was really, wow. really cool. Anyway, it made me sad because I thought there's so many people in this group we could be doing this all the time, but it opens you up to scammers and like, it, yeah. it's, you know, anyway, it's a thing I have to avoid, but it was nice. to do. Yeah. Time. There's another group that I'm in as like a, you know, a backup group <laughs> to juice box. I mean, they did something similar recently, but they ended up having a post like we can't do this anymore sort of thing. Cause somebody did end up getting scammed out of like $250. Yeah. And it was just so sad because it's literally the person who needs it the most. The person who can't afford to be scammed is mm-hmm. the one who gets scammed. Well, I and told it was everybody so heartbreaking over and over again. If anyone asks you for money, don't give it to them and ask and tell me right yeah. away, you know? So, but, and, and yeah. if that was my full-time job, I probably could sit there and run it like a swap meet and, and let people help each other. It's the, it's the yeah. scope. The group is so big that you, there's always someone there to help. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which, anyway. I mean, I know you've got a lot on your plate, but you know, as, as the group continues to grow and stuff, maybe down the line, you could set it up as, um, cause I know like when all this stuff started happening over in Ukraine, there were a lot of organizations, nonprofits that were able to kind of gather the supplies from everybody themselves. And then they distributed from there to make sure that nobody was getting scammed and that everything was getting where it needed to go. So maybe, you know, not anytime soon, but maybe down the line, you can do something where everybody just kind of donates to you in one place. And then you have volunteers from within the group that you trust to kind of disseminate the supplies where they need to go. You don't know how old I am, Amy. I know that when you say that, 
You don't know how old I feel. <laughs> no, uh, I do because I have so many ideas and so many helpful and thoughtful intentions like that, but I don't have the time or the mental capacity at this moment in my life to do them. Yeah. So I completely relate to just because it's a great idea doesn't mean it's always possible right away, oh, yeah. but maybe with the right people, you can, it's something you can explore. It's a money thing, honestly, right? Because if there was enough money, well, yeah, you still have to ship everything. Yeah. And, you could hire yeah. some, you could hire a person who could do it and you could, you know, you could afford the shipping. Cause that's the other thing you can't say to somebody like I shipped the stuff out to three families yesterday on my dime. And I think it cost yeah. me like $65 to ship everything. So like you get, yeah. you get involved in that. And then, but it's, you know, it's funny. We were just talking about this today in, on Facebook. People, I left a curse in a in an episode by mistake. So somebody's like, hey, you left the F word here if you want to go take it out. And then it starts a conversation where inevitably people are like, I would pay if you just put up episodes where you left the cursing in. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, but here's the thing. Like, I can't, you know, like I would. Like, first of all, I don't curse on the podcast. And I bleep out the cursing because it right. it limits the some countries that I can put the show in if you curse. And right. it limits people. And you might not know that as a person who, you know, if, a, if you're a person who doesn't care about dropping an F-bomb once in a while. But there are people who send me notes and are like, listen, you said F and didn't bleep it out. I'm not listening to the podcast anymore. And they're not kidding. Okay. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. I, I'm, I don't want to eliminate those people. If I go to a pay model and say, look, there's episodes over here that say don't have ads on them and there's cursing and et cetera, the advertisers aren't going to be thrilled to know that I'm splitting up the the listenership. And taking yeah. people away that might hear their ads. And so there's just all these. So the idea is, and and if you just charged everyone, and don't think this hasn't like crossed my mind because it has. Like this this year is a great example. 2022, you're recording like right before Christmas with me. The, yes. po- yeah, the podcast has 5 million downloads this year. So you don't need to be a mathematician to know that if I charged 50 cents for a download, I would have made two and a half million dollars this year. And you think, and you think, oh my God, do that. Except that's not really true. Because if I charge 50 cents a download, I wouldn't have 5 million downloads this year. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And you'd, you'd stop people from getting to the information or from the comfort or even just the entertainment of it. And there are people who would look and go, you know, $4 a month seems reasonable, but I'm not paying it. And now there's some kid sitting somewhere where for $4 times 12 for, for $48 a year, that kid's A1C is a point and a half higher than it would need to be if their mom listened to the pro tip series, for example. And yeah. I, I can't wrap my head around doing that. So here we go. So there's no, there's no bigger ideas getting built. Cause I think the big idea is reaching as many people as you can and helping them. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway. Absolutely. All right, Amy, 12 minutes later, how old are you? <laughs> uh, whatever I was born in 87. You don't so whatever know how that old you are. Me. Is that correct? I'm, I'm that person. I'm the person who has to take out the calculator every time someone asks me because I'm just, my brain doesn't do the, it doesn't retain my age. Nice. I think I'm 35, 35, 36, 35, 87. That's how old I am. You were yeah. born two, Junior- year, two years before I graduated from high school. So you're 35. Oh my God. <laughs> you're 35. <laughs> Give me your kids' names again. Riley and Zoe. Riley is five. She just turned five. Mm -hmm. And Zoe just turned three. And we don't care about your husband right now, right? (laughs) You know, he's always telling me, everybody's going to think you're a single parent because you never talk about me on social media. That's my husband's voice right there that I just did. Um, (laughs) So I have to mention him because otherwise I'll, I'll hear about it later. So yes, my husband's name is Chris. Was that you just doing a Caucasian dialect, by the way? Yes, it is. Can you tell? I was going to ask you, I do I you. sound Hispanic? Because I don't think I sound Hispanic, but people tell me I do. And then obviously you just heard my voice change. And that's my, even though he's not Caucasian, he's also Hispanic. So I don't know why I did that voice. You did though. You made him like a white guy in your story. You're like, <laughs> you, did. you did. I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> I think what it was is that's more my stern voice. And I, I, associate sternness with old white men oh so i think that's why it went that way <laughs> do you sound hispanic <laughs> yeah you, do i yeah at the ends of your words a little and when you speed up when you speak a little bit but i've oh, met you a... i've met you and chris in person yes chris pass is easy yeah yeah you not so much 
Like if you were like, if you were like, I'm Irish, I'd be like, no, you're not. But, <laughs> but I think Chris could Yeah, Chris it. has like the lighter hair and the lighter yeah. eyes. And he's very, I think my thing is I'm like super white. And then when I have my hair, like my funky colors, like if I do pink or green or whatever, then I think I pass a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Just like for general American, like just white person. You're trying to name your episode general American? That's amazing. <laughs> no, no, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think we... I think a couple months ago in in a an Instagram DM we we discussed that it should be something like um like do I live near a nuclear plant I think was was what you had said and I said oh that's going to be the name of the episode we'll call you the watch Sim- him name it that we'll call you the Simpsons or something <laughs> so Riley has type one yes so Riley has type one Zoe also type one yep um when and wh- who was diagnosed first Riley Riley was diagnosed first so. She started having symptoms, which I didn't really think of as symptoms, uh, weirdly enough, because my sister is also a type 1 diabetic Mm -hmm. since we were children. And it just didn't really occur to me. It occurred to my sister. She asked me. She said, well, you know, I told her Rye's been drinking a ton of water recently. Actually, the way that it happened was I had a friend with a daughter Riley's age. And she was drinking a bunch of water and she was feeling like lethargic and all these things. And I said, oh, that that sounds kind of like diabetes. Let me put you in touch with my sister and what kind of testing you can have done because I wasn't familiar at the time with things like trial net, but I knew that they existed. Mm-hmm. So I said, let me just put you in touch with my sister. And then through that conversation, I started noticing, well, you know what? Riley's actually been drinking a ton of water recently too, but I didn't really notice anything else that really you know, was like, oh, diabetes, diabetes. So I kind of just put it on the back burner and then she sort of phased out of it for a little bit. So that was like October, 2020. And then April, 2021, things started to kind of ramp up again. I started noticing that she was having a lot of bruising, like really easy bruising. And she was sleepy a lot. She would have like massive ravenous appetite. And then the next day it would be like, she didn't even want to look at food. So I thought something was going on. But my mind, I was thinking more like a urinary tract infection or something because she was also saying ouch whenever she was wetting her diaper. Okay. And then she started wetting the bed a lot overnight. Like I'm talking like a human sized puddle in the middle of the bed, just like the whole mattress wet. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, I took her into the pediatrician. The funny part of the story is that I took her in for a sick visit. And her sister was due for a well a wellness check, like her yearly exam. Yeah. So I took them both in the same day at the same time. And they checked them both over. They told me, come back on Monday with Riley so that we can do a urine collection. But nothing was mentioned about T1D or anything. They said more. They were thinking like something like anemia, probably UTI, something along those lines. So we went home. I brought her back on the Monday. So April 5th. And... I was supposed to collect the urine sample at home. So I started loading her up with apple juice (laughs) and we get to the um, pediatrician. They take some blood work and immediately come back in the room and they're like, Hey, so you might need to sit down. Don't freak out. I need you to have your husband pack a bag. And if you can't drive, come and get you, but you guys need to go straight to the hospital because Riley is diabetic and i have a very strong feeling that she's about to be in ketoacidosis and i was like oh i know those words because of my sister and i just my reaction was i started laughing because i was like there's no way this is happening and it just that's my reaction i was just giggling nervous giggle we went to the hospital and sure enough she she was diagnosed there and they put her on um some fluids thankfully uh with the blood gases and all the stuff that they check they figured out she wasn't in DKA, but she was like right at the edge. So I believe her A1C in the ER was like 13.8, 13.7 or 13.8. Okay. So at that point, then we started realizing, oh, some of this stuff now makes a lot of sense because she was having like random napping when she hadn't been napping. You know, we had eliminated that from her schedule for months and just all of these things kind of lining up. She had been having blurry vision, which we didn't think was, we didn't put that together because um, Riley's also autistic. And so she does a lot of what we call stimming, which is just like, sort of like, I guess like these ticks and different things that give her like sensory input. Mm -hmm. So recently she had been like taking her fingers and like squinting her eyes and opening them like really wide 
and just making different shapes. And we thought that was just her having a new stim. And after the diagnosis, we realized, oh, she's now that her sugars are in control. Stop doing that. We really think that that was now in retrospect, her like having blurry vision from the high blood sugars and just trying to actually open her eyes more so she could see better. And um, that was like a real interesting thing to look back on and realize because it was like right there in front of our face, but we didn't, we just didn't put it together, you know? Stimming, repetitive, uh, repetitive behaviors or noises often associated with autism. Stimming describes self stimulation. Stimulation. It says stimulatory. (laughs) I don't know why smart people can't just talk like everybody, but okay. Stimming describes self stimulatory behaviors that involve repetitive movements or sound commonly refers to behaviors displayed by people with autism, such as flapping, rocking back and forth. You don't have to be autistic to stim. For example, tapping your foot when you're nervous could be an example of it. It does look different though, when it's a sign of autism, for instance, behaviors like finger flicking and twirling can become excessive and or obtrusive in someone who has autism. After you're done listening today, please head over to touchedbytype1.org. Check out all the good things that they're doing at Touched by Type 1. There's the big conference coming up that I'll I'll be speaking at that in a couple of weeks, actually. We're getting close now. I think it's sold out, but you can check. Touchedbytype1.org. And by sold out, the tickets are free. I just I, Maybe the tickets are gone. You can find out. Uh, what else? they got the big dance recital coming up. All kinds of stuff. Touched by type one.org. This is a great organization helping people living with type 1 diabetes. Learn more about them and follow them on Facebook and Instagram. There are links to Touched by Type 1 in the show notes of the podcast player you're listening in now and at juiceboxpodcast.com. You'll also find links to all kinds of other things there, like my next sponsor, AG1. I began drinking AG1 because I was concerned about my gut health and my vitamin intake. And now I use AG1 every day. It's a foundational nutritional supplement that delivers comprehensive nutrition to support your whole body's health. I heard about AG1 on a podcast, just like you're hearing about it now. And I clicked on a link and you can use mine. Drinkag1.com forward slash juice box. It took me a little bit of time to move AG1 into my morning ritual. But after a few days, it just became a habit. Get up. Get dressed, go downstairs, grab the jug of water, grab my AG1, shake, shake, shake. Next thing you know, I'm doing something good for my body. And what keeps me doing it? Well, it's how I feel. I just feel better drinking AG1. Drinkag1.com forward slash juice box. Links in the show notes. Links at juiceboxpodcast.com. If you can't remember, drinkag1.com forward slash juice box. When you use my link, you're also going to receive five free travel packs and a year's supply of vitamin D with your first order. So if you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 right now with my link, drinkag1.com forward slash juice box. When you click on my links, you're supporting the podcast and helping to keep it free and plentiful. So, yeah. So we kind of wrote it off as just, you know, it's probably a stim. It's, you know, we'll take her to the doctor. We'll get her checked out. But we don't think that all of these things were connected. And obviously, in hindsight, we can now see things like irritability was another thing we wrote off because obviously with with not obviously, but with autism, there are a lot of triggers and triggers lead to meltdowns and different behaviors and at that point in time, she was in therapies and things like that. Uh, so we were working on a lot of those things, but she was also very expressive. And had, we had noticed that she was super irritable more than usual. Mm-hmm. And so we just kind of wrote it off as, oh, she's she's in the therapy. She's working on things. It's going to get harder for her before it gets easier. She's working through stuff. So we kind of just put it on the back burner, didn't think about it twice. And definitely with her being in the hospital, more so than the actual diabetes diagnosis, what worried us and what scared us and what really shook us was this idea of 
how is she going to deal with this as an autistic person? Because yeah. a lot of the autism centers around, like I said, triggers, which can be physical triggers, things like, you know, the poking of the fingers and the shots. We thought that was just going to be impossible for her because, you know, sometimes she just gets like completely naked around the house because she can't stand the feeling of the clothes on her skin. Mm -hmm. So now imagine thinking about her future of constantly having to be touched and pricked and prodded. And then when she gets an insulin pump, having to wear that all the time. And so we were, we were more nervous and more just like really scared of how all that was going to affect her more so than the actual management of the diabetes. So how, well, yeah, how, I mean, okay. So that's, that's a lot. We'll let everybody soak that up for a second. Yeah. <laughs> um, how old was Riley when you realized she had autism? So she was probably about, I think she was like six months old. Um, when we started noticing that she wasn't meeting these, you know, standard milestones that they give you from the pediatrician, Okay. the CDC lays out. We knew that she was physically delayed because she had plagiocephaly, which is basically when the head kind of gets like slightly misshapen from tightness in the muscles. And that typically occurs when an infant can't lift, like they don't do enough, they don't spend enough time on their stomach yeah, or they spend enough time on their stomach, but they just don't have the strength. So they end up having to do physical therapy, which is what she ended up having to do. She had to wear a little baby helmet, which was adorable but she had to wear this little helmet and she had to do physical therapy for like nine months in order to properly learn how to lift her head and then eventually crawl and then eventually sit. And then once she was able to be sitting, then she kind of the next couple milestones she made up on her own and she was fine, mm -hmm. like walking, running, things like that. But, but yeah. Uh, so I we started, those were the first signs. And then speech delay was the next thing that was really big for her. She, she didn't, she would babble a lot, but she couldn't really, she would, she had two modes. She would either babble a ton and repetitively. So not really actually communicating or she would completely shut down and just not speak at all, which led to a lot of like frustration and tantrums mm -hmm. and things like that. I have a, I have um, a question going back to the, um, yeah to the, the wearing, the wearing of the helmet to stop the flat spot, which is called plagiocephaly. Yeah. All right. Not bad. If you don't address that, <laughs> if you don't use the helmet, yeah. what do they tell you is going to happen? So the head will stay misshapen um, and those bones, which are really soft and kind of just migrating to, you know, because the, when a kid is born, the, the cranial bones are like really soft and they are not quite fused together so that the, the infant can pass through the vaginal canal and all that stuff if you're birthing. So once they start fusing, they're going to fuse into whatever shape. So if a, a kid spends a lot of time, you know, in a, in a swing, for example, or, you know, like their high chair, whatever, they can develop these flat spots and then their bones will actually fuse like in that shape. Yeah. And that can later cause pressure on the brain in areas where there shouldn't be excessive pressure, which can lead to like problems with vision. It can lead with problems with the sinuses for Riley. She had like her cheekbones actually were like too high up mm -hmm. because her face wasn't like, it wouldn't expand the right way because of the plagiocephaly. Wow. So yeah, we wore the little helmet and then they, they did a, it's called a doc band. If you want to look it up, they do like a before and an after, and they show you the different shape of, you know, the facial features and everything. And it was insane to me. Like her head is still a little bit, you can tell it's a little bit differently shaped mm -hmm. because for her, the first round of the helmet didn't work as well. So she had to wear it like two different rounds. And by the second round, a lot of her bones had already begun to fuse. So you can still tell that there's like that difference in her head shape. Yeah. But even just from the before and the after pictures, you can see what a difference it made. Like her whole facial features like they changed because of her cheekbones being able to drop down and set where they where they should be it's, it's pretty it's interesting yeah, it's amazing actually um yeah for, so for you and i mean i'm looking at the numbers here so you're in like your early 30s and mm -hmm. you have a baby and then the baby you know starts showing these signs what's yep. the, what's the um the impact on you personally and your relationship at that point Honestly, I mean, so a, a lot of how we reacted to it goes back to the fact that I myself have a lot of health issues and we weren't even able 
we weren't sure if we would be able to have like our own kids. Mm -hmm. So when we started noticing the signs, you know, obviously there's a part of you that's just kind of like, oh, you know, I don't, I would never choose to have medical complications for my kid or differences because we kind of come to, we've come to see autism as just like we're differently wired Mm -hmm. versus it being like a defect. So it does present challenges, but a lot of those challenges come from the fact that our society is not designed for people who are differently wired, not so much that being differently wired causes an issue in and of itself. I don't know if that makes sense. It does. So what are some of your health issues? Uh, So I have lupus. I have systemic lupus. So that's like, it it involves all the systems of the body, um, which is an autoimmune disorder. And then I also have Hashimoto's thyroiditis and endometriosis, which is a gynecological disease. And that, I don't know if you know anything about that, but basically it's tissue from inside of the uterus or tissue similar to that of inside of the uterus ends up in places of the body where it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. And then whenever your hormones change throughout the month, that tissue like contracts and it can basically choke out or cuts like blood supply off and cause scarring and damage to wherever it's attached. So if it's attached on the bladder or the bowel, different places, it causes a ton of pain. And then it can also affect your, your ability to, it it affects fertility a lot. And Riley has autism and type one. Does she have anything else? Uh, no. No, no, she is. Yeah. So far, so good. She'll be getting, as she ages, she'll get like the testing done for lupus because, um, and for endometriosis, because there is an increased chance for both of those things since I do have them. Mm -hmm. But that'll be something that usually that manifests itself like in the teen years, late teens, early twenties kind of thing. Right. How about Zoe? Does she have anything we want to talk? I mean, she has type one, obviously, but is there anything else happening? Yeah, no, she is, she is going to be evaluated pretty soon for sensory processing disorder, Mm -hmm. which is, it falls like within the realm of autism and like what they call the spectrum. There's a lot of back and forth within like the community for autism about like, like preferred language and, you know, like how these um, sub conditions are like described and things like that. So I think you had an episode that aired recently with another parent with an autistic child, and she kind of touched on a lot of those things, like how even within the community, we're not really sure how we're, what is appropriate or the appropriate way to talk about it or explain it. Yeah. But yeah, as of right now, it's considered like a subset of autism, but basically it manifests itself instead of like affecting cognitive abilities, it manifests itself more physically. So, so he needs like a lot of stimulation or having too much stimulation will send her like into like a tantrum or be really upsetting for her and difficult to deal with. Mm. So lots of noises or physical input can be really overwhelming for them both. Is it frustrating that, and I don't mean that the community doesn't, can't settle on like agree on things because you see it in other communities too, right? There's people who tell you like, I wish it wasn't called type one and type two diabetes and stuff like that. Like everybody, everybody has their thing. I don't mean that, but I mean, is it frustrating that it's not like you go to the doctor and the doctor goes, oh, you have the flu and this is how we yeah. treat the flu. Is that yeah, is that part hard? Yeah, it is it, because so much of it is so subjective. And because of the nature of autism specifically being like, it's technically a neurological quote unquote disorder. That means that it's hard to separate what would be considered the disorder from what could just be considered quirks that are just a personality, like personality quirks. Mm -hmm. So, and especially at their ages where they're just developing their personalities, it's really difficult to be like, is this toddler behavior or is this something more that I need to be a little bit more flexible on because she has a need that's not being met. Yeah with the autism and stuff. How old was So it is oh, kind of I wish it was just like really straightforward testing kind of thing and just be like okay this is it's like any disease like that has any subjectivity to it it's you you get diagnosed and then you take a medication and there's always some give or take and you have to be fluid about certain things but for the most part a lot of these things are very straightforward. Just, and with mental health and cognitive and neurological things it's not quite that way. Yeah. It just it to me it feels like 
there's things going on in your life constantly. Mostly you're probably wrong about them when you try to figure out what they are, you know, but, but at least you can kind of say, put it in a box and, and call it something so that you know what to do or how to deal or whatever. But it just, I don't know. It would be, it would sound frustrating to me. I'm going through that now. I don't know if you remember, but I'm going through the process of being diagnosed myself with LADA. Yeah. So, or type two, we're not sure at this point, which is very much to the point of what you're saying is I just kind of want it to be defined already. So I know how I can approach it because I, I am the type of person that uh, the enemy I know is, is easier to deal with than the unknown. Even if it's bad news and they tell me you're, you're going to have to take insulin the rest of your life, whatever. I'd rather know that than be in like this limbo Hmm. that it seems like I'm going to be stuck in for a while because it's such a slow onset. And there's no real way for them. They're like, well, you don't have the characteristics for type two, but you also don't have the antibodies yet for type one. So we're not sure if it's LADA or if it's this or, you know, it. there's so much unknown there that I'm just kind of like really frustrated with the whole process. Yeah, no, I, I, I think I understand. Um, okay. So how old is Zoe when she's diagnosed type one? So she is 17 months old. Okay. Well overachiever there on that one um yeah, right? 17 months. <laughs> and then okay and, and the other diagnosis stuff is happening now and she's three and let's just yeah. to round out the story before we move forward your sister has type one as well well let me let me finish on zoe's oh end. go ahead yeah, yeah yeah because they're the unique thing about them is they were diagnosed 14 days apart so riley was diagnosed on april 5th I told you the whole story. We ended up in the hospital. We were there. We got our learning. We went home. So we're back at home, like around the 10th, I think it was. And we're getting Riley into her new routine. She's doing her finger pricks every morning and she's getting used to everything. And 17 month old Zoe comes trotting in one day and she's just like sticks her finger out and she's feeling left out. And she's feeling sort of like, I want to know what's going on with my sister. I'm concerned about this. Do me. And she sticks her finger out and she asks to have her blood, her blood checked before a meal. Mm -hmm. And this is breakfast. So they hadn't eaten anything yet. And I prick her finger and I'm all excited because she didn't cry and all this stuff. And then it took me a second to actually realize that what was happening. I looked down at the meter and she's over 300. Oh my God. And I'm like, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, oh. that was my sister was with us because she and my mom came to stay with us right after Riley's diagnosis to kind of give a lending hand and help us adjust. Yeah. And so my sister just kind of like her, she starts laughing because she's like, there's no way. There's just no way. There's no way that you have hit this jackpot of both of your kids being diabetic after everything that's been happening. There's just no way. And so I call the pediatrician and they tell me to come in in the afternoon or that evening. So we take her in. And when we take her in, her blood sugar is back to normal. She's like in the 80s. Mm-hmm. And so the lady's kind of giving me a hard time because this is not our normal doctor. This is the after hours doctor. And so she's giving me a hard time about this. Like, oh, well, 80 is perfectly normal. She probably just had like her finger wasn't clean. I was like, I clean her finger with alcohol. My other daughter's diabetic. Like, I know we're new to this, but we're not that new to this that, you know, we would make a mistake that would give us that number and then we'd freak out. Yeah. So I'm trying to kind of like advocate and I'm like, can you please just do like a P test? There's, there's, it's so non invasive. Just do the P test. So she does the thing. And of course, it comes back uh, plus like three or something like that for ketones. And, and she's got um, spillage of glucose in the urine. Mm. So then at that point, she's like, okay, yeah, you guys need to go to the hospital. And she's like, but I think you can wait till the morning. So we put in the call to our Riley's endocrinologist at this point, And we're like, hey, we're going to be there tomorrow morning and, and just have everything ready. So they take us in and I believe Zoe's A1C was uh, seven, 7.6, I believe is what it was wow. when they did it. So we caught it like like right there early enough she didn't need to have like insulin right away but yeah that's that was the it was sort of interesting because then like all the people that had just seen us a couple weeks back were like wait why are you back here and then we're like explaining and at the time she was the youngest that they had had on the ward uh 17 months old was the youngest that they had had since they opened up that wing for the hospital Hmm. so yeah do you get a plaque or something they name a wing after you or no no nothing nothing good but (laughs) no but 
she did have, um, they did have us teach the nurses how to dilute the insulin because prior to us being there, they hadn't used diluted insulin for somebody around Zoe's age. It was mostly like kids like in elementary school level. Uh So they would always just get it compounded, like get it at a pharmacy. But with Zoe's age and her needs changing and stuff, I said, well, I want to be able to mix the insulin myself so that if we need to adjust the the strength Mm -hmm. for the dilution, I can do it from home and not have to constantly be running out to the pharmacy whenever we're tweaking her dosages and stuff. Right. So they actually had us go down to the clinic. We learned how to do the dilution and like all the math and all that stuff. And then when we got back upstairs, because this was in the, the endo clinic is within the hospital. When we got back upstairs, they had us, the nurses come by like one at a time and had us teach the nurses so that they could learn and they could begin mixing it on the floor because prior to that, they would have to wait for the pharmacy downstairs to mix it for them. That's unreal. So, yeah. How about yeah. That? Wow. Okay. So, <laughs> I mean, now there's two of them and you, yep. I mean, it, honestly, do you think about going to the mall and not coming home? Like doing the old, <laughs> like, I'm going to go get milk, Chris. I'll be right back. And then you're just like, that's <laughs> the end of it. Or, I mean, what, or are you just so focused on handling things that you don't have time to freak out? Yeah. So I think I've had enough trauma in my life that I kind of, I'm like a, I'm a good man in the storm, I guess is the phrase that I've heard Okay, that probably explains it best. I don't panic. I don't freak out when, when something like crazy out of the norm happens just because I'm, I've, I've got like, I don't know if it's, it's not thick skin, but it's just, I have like this, it's like a fight or flight kind of thing. And I just, I focus on what needs to be done in the moment. Mm -hmm rather than dwelling on how did I get here? Why did this happen? Not to say those things aren't valid feelings to have. And of course I've had them before. I right. can't tell you how many times I've just sat there in the shower and cried, but ultimately, you're supposed to stand in the shower. It does nothing Amy. for me. Amy, maybe that's why you're crying. Are you doing it wrong? You're supposed to stand <laughs> in the shower. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, maybe well, not when you, not when you have lupus, sometimes you have to sit in the shower. Really? <laughs> Jesus, are you serious? Yes. I can't joke yeah. with you at all. You got too many things going on. <laughs> well, uh, you can joke. I mean, it's that's how I get through it. You got to yeah. laugh about it and you got to make jokes because otherwise it's just plain sad. How do you manage and, lupus? And that's not me. I don't. I'm not like that. Yeah. How do you manage lupus? Is there something that you can do to help yourself? There are. It just, it really depends on how progressed it is. And lupus is a disease that has periods of, of activity and then periods of remission. So like right now, for example, I'm in like a massive lupus flare. And so during the flares, I'll get steroid, steroid medication, and that will help calm like the inflammation and reduce the damage that the inflammation is doing to my body, basically. But I can't be on steroids, you know, 24 seven, because then that will cause its own issues and its own problems. So it's kind of just managing like the flare ups as they happen. And then, you know, the longer you have it, of course, like I've been told eventually at some point in my life, like there'll be lung involvement, there'll be different things like the kidneys is usually one of the big ones where you start having decreased function and things like that. But there, there are things you can do to kind of just manage each of those symptoms, like separately, there's not really any way to stop it unless I mean, some people get chemo, because it's, it's a it's an autoimmune disease. So basically if your immune system is so overactive that you're constantly attacking your own body, then they'll do chemo and that will basically blast your immune system. So now you have higher risk of things like infection and stuff, but your body is no longer has an immune system to activate in order to attack you. So technically your disease would be in remission at that point. Hmm. What is that, um, what but is that's that, reserved for the most of your cases. What's a flare up look like for you? So it can vary with this one. It The most basic symptoms of it are like flu-like symptoms. So a lot of like aches, pains, joint and muscle aching, a lot of inflammation, mostly around the joints, all the joints. I'm talking like, like the littlest joint in your pinky finger. Well, mm-hmm. it'll literally just like swell up. It's also very different like from person to person. Yeah. And then you get like there's like skin symptoms. So I'll get like this rash that goes across like the bridge of my nose and my cheeks. It's called a butterfly rash. And that'll just it's not itchy or anything, but it's just a lot of swelling in the face. and It'll be very red. Okay. Sun sensitivity issues with like maintaining vitamin D levels because you can't be out in the sun and your body doesn't synthesize the vitamin D as well. So 
which is very similar with diabetes. Mm -hmm. They have that issue as well. So it's a lot of things like that. Digestive issues. It just depends what system of the body is being actively attacked at that point. Okay. Wow. Okay. Well, (sighs) do we just just (laughs) take a break? Should we sing? Like, what do we do right now? (laughs) I mean, is there oh more stuff God. we haven't gotten to so far? Well, yeah. I mean, you we wanted to touch on my sister. My sister was was the first diabetic in the family, the first person that we know of with autoimmune, mm-hmm. um, anything autoimmune. And she's, I, I swear to you, you're going to want to have her do her whole own episode because her story is is incredible. She was diagnosed in 1994. So she's been through tech, like having technology, not having technology. She had insurance, not have insurance. She was she lived through the era of when we had pre-existing conditions on insurance plans as like a Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember barrier, being basically. I remember being worried about that when Arden was diagnosed. Like yeah. uh, the idea of like Arden has a pre-existing condition, she won't be able to get health insurance. Yeah. And that kind of has morphed in 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 how insurance works. But I remember yeah. being so scared about that. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was such a huge. It yeah. was such a huge barrier back. I mean, not with diabetes for me, but with my other conditions. I I literally went without treatment for so long because I was constantly considered. I got. I was that person that got caught in the cycle of get a job, have to wait the three months to get the insurance, then have to wait for the pre existing clause to to be met the requirement for that. Mm -hmm. And then by the time that happened, my employer is so sick of me missing work because I haven't been able to treat the condition because the insurance won't cover it due to the pre-existing clause that now they fire me and I have to go find another job and the cycle starts all over. And that was literally like my life for 10 or 15 years until everything kind of with the affordable care act and all that stuff kind of put a a damp on, uh, put a stop to the pre-existing stuff. But but yeah, it's it's such a huge thing, and thankfully, you know, our kids don't have to deal with that now, because I don't even I wouldn't even know where to begin if if that was still something that we had to contend with. Wow, yeah, no kidding. I mean, yeah, Jesus, imagine you couldn't get insurance, and so then your kids wouldn't have insurance. Yep. And then, mm-hmm. boo, then you're then you're going to the lake. Then you're going to the yep. lake. Yeah, out to the middle. Or couple. you're still paying for the insurance. You're just not covered for that condition, oh. which is even worse because now you're having to pay for the insurance. But, and and supplies and things out of out of pocket, so like it, yeah, yeah. But it won't help you with the thing you actually need the help. But it with. won't help you, yeah. Yeah. See, all right. Oh my god. So your sister, I'm sorry, your sister's diagnosed very young as well. Yeah, she was 11. So mm-hmm. I was. She's four years older than me. Okay. So yeah, she was like right in the middle, like starting middle school, and and witnessing everything that she went through was definitely put us in a place now as parents with two T1Ds where we're doing everything possible to make sure that the kids have everything they need, not just supplies and things like that, but as far as like support and community and just making more decisions involving like the kids' mental health. Mm -hmm. Because I saw how much that not having that from her doctors back in the day was not mental health was not something that was talked about in 1994. And how much she struggled with it during that period of her life where she was literally like teenager, which is already a difficult time. And then just diagnosed. And, and she, obviously we, we were not well off as a family around that time either. So we had a lot of issues with her and the insurance and things like that. And she had to, you should really have her on. She went through rationing. There was a one point in time where she was taking like her Lantus shot, like every two days because she was just trying to ration it out. Mm. She's got a lot of, a lot of interesting things that she can share, yeah. but she definitely um, impacted how we think about diabetes in terms of what we want to do, what we don't want to do, and things that we want to focus on, and what we think is important about management. Well, hold on, seriously, you're. Can I, Amy? Can I say something? Yes. <laughs> Her life is such a mess that it's making me dizzy. It is. <laughs> oh <my> <laughs> I am amazed that I am so well adjusted considering everything that's happened and that my kids are so well adjusted considering that they have me as a parent so your girls are <laughs> your girls are lovely and i wonder about thank you oh, oh please it's, it's, uh, it's obvious so let me <laughs> let me let me ask you this when all these things happen in your life and it becomes obvious that your children are going to have 
things that they need to do and, you know, as far as learning and growing and health stuff, does your life get, um, I don't know what I mean here. Uh, be careful with the microphone on your hair, by the way. But yeah, does your, that's I'm pulling it back. <laughs> that's okay. Does your life get smaller in scope? Like, like when you're first married, do you think like, oh, we're gonna do this? Like, do you have big ideas about like conquering the world, kind of stuff, whatever that means to you. And then once it becomes obvious that your needs are gonna be daily and I, I'm assuming hourly, do you start to like not? I don't mean like close yourself off to the world, but do you start narrowing your focus? Do you start thinking like, well, this is my life like this? So, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I absolutely. My husband and I uh, drove down to Miami for an appointment over the weekend. And we were literally talking about that exact thing almost the entire way down. We, so for me, I had the benefit i guess would be the right term okay. of having been sick myself and having to have adjust my i had to adjust my own expectations prior to my kids coming along and prior to them being diagnosed so i already had to make huge adjustments as far as what i was what i saw for my life going mm-hmm. you know into the future so i kind of already was that had already been tempered down somewhat I did have, you know, I was, I went to college and I was studying photography for a while. And then when I started getting sick, I switched over to pre-med, interestingly enough, because I started finding all of these doctors that I was interacting with. I found it so interesting and I watched a ton of Grey's Anatomy, if I'm being (laughs) honest, that definitely influenced it. (laughs) Amy, that's why I think I can be a doctor, by the way. (laughs) I'm going to slip in sarcoidosis somewhere while we're talking or whatever. <laughs> well, that's more of a house, a house. It is, that is diagnosis. House. Yeah. Right. Everything, very... everything they couldn't figure out was, was sarco- sarcoidosis. <laughs> that's right. It's never lupus though. Do you think, it's the, not lupus. Do you think the doc, the, the writers just got like, they were like, Oh my God, we've been doing this for seven years. Uh, just say it's sarcoidosis. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> well, I always thought that was an interesting cause so when I went to school and I switched to pre-med, I said, well, look, even if I can't physically work in a hospital because now my, my conditions are progressing, maybe I can use this in like the way that, you know, people work in Hollywood consulting on shows and consulting for, you know, movies and things like that to make sure they have all the medical stuff. Right. I would totally love to do that. It's different and it's fun. And then again, tempering my expectations as things progressed, that flew out the window. And, and then I just, I became a stay-at-home parent because it's much cheaper. I, we would have ended up having to pay more for like daycare. I would have not brought home enough money to cover daycare and still make a profit doing that. So it was just cheaper for us to have me be a stay-at-home parent. And then I was already in that position when we started discovering that the kids had these needs. Mm-hmm. So it kind of all just happened that way. But I would be lying if I didn't say that some days I wake up and I'm just kind of like, I wish that, you know, I was still pursuing, you know, photography and chasing this band across the United States and covering their whole tour. And because that's what I used to do is concert photography. I definitely do wake up some days and I'm like, oh, I wish that was still happening. But I also feel like my world has gotten bigger in different ways. As you know, we have a huge social media following over on, on TikTok and we've got on Instagram, we've got that going. We're starting YouTube and it's something that I never would have seen myself doing. In fact, I probably would have made fun of myself if like me from back then saw me now be like, oh, what? You're like a like an influencer now or something. <laughs> like I would have totally kicked my own butt. But I think that what we're doing definitely fills some of that, if not a di- in a different way, it fills some of that need and some of that desire that I had before of just like wanting to be important and do something huge with my life you know yeah because we are we're you know i'm not a doctor and i'm not you know fixing anybody out there but just being able to talk to another parent or even another t1d that's like hey you know um, i've had this for years and i've never been able to get over my fear of you know poking my finger and seeing your kids doing it you know with each other and supporting each other has made me reach out and and be a part of this community now that i'm finding for the first time that's so like huge and i don't have to tell you i mean you live it every day uh, having an impact on other people's lives is something that we didn't plan for but mm-hmm. 
it's not something that everybody can do. And we have to realize that we're, we're kind of lucky in the sense that we get to do that. Yeah. I don't know if I feel lucky, but I understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. I think, mean, well, so that's where our, our, our um, social media name accidentally amazing comes from that. It was this thought that we never would choose this even going back. If we had three wishes and we could go back and change the kids not being diabetic, of course we would in a heartbeat, but it's actually turned out to be accidentally amazing mm-hmm. in ways that we never would have expected. We've been able to find good things about it to focus on and more importantly to help the kids focus on because whatever we model for them in terms of perspective about their life and their conditions and their challenges is what they're going to build their own perspective about themselves and about what they go through. They're going to build on that. So we have to do our best to no. to set a good foundation for that. Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, I take your point and I understand and I feel lucky that what I do during the day helps people a lot. Honestly, I don't feel lucky that, you know, that autoimmune stuff found my family, but as long as it did, you know, dot, 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 then, then the rest of it does feel lucky. I, 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 I was trying to be funny and instead I said something that you were like, Oh no. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's okay. Um, is it intrusive? So these these platforms they demand video, and mm-hmm. what people might not know about them is you could build a massive following on Instagram, for example, and mm-hmm. and it could go away in a split second. Like the algorithm could stop pushing people to your content, or you could just get into a situation where you can't make something for a week or two. And people are yep. just like, well, I'll, I'll go find someone else. And then you're gone. All, once your momentum's gone, the whole thing's over. Yeah. The, the podcasting has that similar issue. And I would be lying to you if I didn't tell you that I worry about it, like, constantly. It's almost like feeling like you opened a donut shop and then someone opened one up two blocks away. And you're like, no, 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 no. You're you know, like, <laughs> like, like, even if they go check out the donuts, it, they might never come back even if those aren't any better like whatever it's just it's it's that feeling of like you've built a thing and it feels like it's built on i don't know just straw and mud you know so like do you feel a pressure to be constantly making stuff i i think i do mostly because you know we're not really like monetizing or anything off of it we have a couple of like partnerships like within the diabetes space which mostly is stuff that we do because it helps us cover our own costs for our supplies, like the extra stuff insurance doesn't cover. So by doing like content for them, you know, we'll get some patches here and there. And, and that goes a long way, especially when you have the two diabetics. Plus now myself, I wear Dexcom as well. So it's a lot of stuff. But I don't feel pressure in the sense that I have to make the kids do it. It's more like they do it when they're up for it. And when they want to, and thankfully it's something that they do. I feel like it's made their management a little bit easier because when a a site change comes up, instead of it being like, oh, I'm dreading the site change, what they're focusing on is, oh, are we going to make a video about it? Mm Because we want to, they get excited about making the videos. Okay. So it's definitely helped us with the management and we don't ever, it's, it's always offered. It's never something that we hold them to. So I do feel pressure on myself whenever they're in, you know, like a phase where, oh, maybe they don't want to make as many videos or maybe I just have a lot of other stuff going on. Then I do feel like, okay, I'm not. And it's more like I'm letting people down who are counting on us. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense Mm -hmm. because we're not even close to doing like what you do in terms of actually helping people understand like day to day management and things that are actually going to improve their health. But I think that what we do kind of gives, it fills the space of the mental and emotional support that a lot of T1Ds and a lot of kids and a lot of caregivers need. Yeah. And so like, we feel like we give a little bit of community and we're kind of a sounding board sometimes less about giving advice and more about just, I hear you, I see what you're going through. Maybe this thing that we did this one time might help you and you can think about it this way. And so when we're not there to do that and we're not being picked up by the algorithm, then I feel like, oh, we're not going to be reaching that one person that might have really needed to see this video today. Mm. So, yeah, definitely. That's definitely there. Yeah, it could be a thankless job. And the and 
I'm assuming you don't make a living from it, right? Like No, not at it. all. Yeah, I mean, I would love to. Yeah, but, but you're doing it like, <laughs> you know, for for the response that it that it and and for what it gives to other people. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it helps us maintain that, you know, the 10% discount here for our for our followers, 10% there. And I know that, you know, for some people that 10% could make the difference between them getting their kids the patches or not or getting themselves the patches or not. And so if us pushing ourselves to make content in order to keep those things going is what's going to facilitate that, then that's for right now that that's enough because I don't ever see myself. Like I said earlier, this was never something that I would have envisioned for myself. It's not like this is my niche and like I'm, I've always been good at this or something. And, and it happened to coincide with us being diagnosed. Like this is not something that every day I turn on my phone and I have to teach myself like a new piece of technology to keep up with what's going on. You're not a and hip kid anymore, Amy. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> and it's not always enjoyable. I mean, the editing of the videos and stuff down, it it takes a lot. It's a lot of, I mean, Time. you do it with the podcast and stuff and much longer format, obviously. I had off tomorrow and and I didn't block the day for some reason on my calendar. And the other day, this this kid, like a kid, like under 18, like a teenager, wants to be on the podcast and asks. And I, I go through the whole thing. I'm like, let me talk to your parents. Blah, blah, and I send, a, I send her a link. And I say, okay, look, you'll use this link. And, but I'm telling you, like, there's not going to be a day until, like, I know this sounds crazy. because <gasps> December 20th. There won't be a day until, like, I don't know. I mean, September or October of 2023 where you can set up a recording. As much yeah. as I tried not to bloat my schedule, I was like, I tried so I just screwed it up. And I just... I, I hear from people. I'm like, that's interesting. Let them come on. Let them. Before I know it, I'm full. And so, uh, yeah. I, I so she pops on, and December 21st is open, and she just and she just takes it. And I'm like, my first like, I get the email, and I'm like, I'll just email the person back, say, hey, that day wasn't supposed to be open. Just go pick another day. And then I looked, and I saw it's this girl, and she's younger, and she's excited, and I was like, oh, okay. I'll just do you can that. Make it work. Yeah, I'll do we'll that. Try. And then my yeah. wife's like, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, well, "I'm just going to record." She's like, You're, "We have a lot to do for the holidays." And I was like, "I know." I'm like, "But I'm going to just record tomorrow for an hour, like, you know." <laughs> and it, it's the editing part. There's no way anybody would understand. It's no. a, it's a massive chunk of my life, and yeah. it feels like. I mean, I'm sure all businesses are like this. And I, I I hate to say that this is a business, but it is, you know, and right. it's a business that happens to be helping people. It's not selling people cars, but it's still, it's a, you know, it is like, I have to do things on a schedule. I have business relationships I have to maintain. There's contracts. Yeah, I have it's to a lot of administration on yeah, top of the lot, creative aspect. You have no idea. And so, um, <laughs> you know, you just feel like at any moment, I don't know, it could just disappear. I feel that all the time. And I mean, yes, you wouldn't want your business to disappear because you're paying your bills with it, but or maybe it's part of who you are or a number of different reasons. But for me, I feel the same thing you're talking about. It's like, I know somebody gets helped by this, and if I don't make this show, then that stops. And you might think, well, how does talking to Amy about her and Riley and Zoe and her sister, like, how does that help people's blood sugars get better? It it does. It, maybe yep. we say something today that helps someone's health, but more specifically, we might make a fan of the show, and then that person might then pick through the show more and go, oh, what is Bold Beginnings? Or what is Defining Diabetes? Or what is the Pro Tips? Which is where you're going to get real, like, management stuff that's going to really kind of pull it together for you. So it's not as easy as just saying, hey, there's 25 episodes here. They're called Pro Tips. If you read, if you listen to them, I mean, honestly, I just got a review the other day because I say sometimes, listen to the Pro Tips. Your blood, your A one C will be in this in the mid to low sixes, and mm-hmm. I, I got a note from a guy and said, just like the guy promised, I listened to the pro tips, and this is my A one C. And so, like yep. when you know it actually works, I feel it as a pressure and as a responsibility. Yeah. And then when you know that the format you're using is social media based, you think, oh God, like what if the algorithm comes for me and just stops telling people about the show, or yep. you know, like what if people just stop sharing, or it's a I don't know. It isn't fun to, yeah, and no. it, I try not to think about it, but it's there, you know? So anyway, yeah, and that's pretty much it. I, I, I just complained about having a podcast. <laughs> there are people right now, there's some, somebody right now is under a truck taking off an axle and it was like, Hey, this guy's life is terrible. <laughs> he had to edit a podcast and he's worried about the algorithm. 
<laughs> yeah, well, you know. see, that's that's what I was saying earlier. It's yeah. not so much that we're lucky we get to do like that we have to do this or whatever. It's more like we're going to be diabetic or we're going to have diabetic kids or be diabetic, whatever. Regardless, there's no way of changing that. At least we get to have a voice about it and and do something, squeeze something out of it that is good in the end of the day. Mm. Yeah. Well, please. I mean, it's it's the greatest, most lovely thing I've ever done in my life. And I really <laughs> hope to just do it forever uh, in a way that helps people. But I also don't want to yeah. be at the end where I'm just like sitting back in this chair going like, yeah, so Amy, diabetes, huh? Go ahead, you talk. You, you, you know, like I don't want to get, I don't want to get bored by it, and and it stopped being, you know, what it is. But I guess that people would sort me out if I did that. Anyway. Oh yeah, I'm sure they'd be calling you out. Everywhere. Yeah, yeah, that's what I need. Um, do you uh, do you have? Is there anything we haven't spoken about that you think we should have? You know, I did want to mention because we were talking about insurance and all that. The kids recently were in Florida, and I'm sure this is different for every state, but. In our state, we are we are not well off by any means, but we do make more than what the threshold would be considered for SSI or disability. And, you know, we applied anyways with the kids, even knowing that we were just a little bit outside of that that income range. And we actually were were able to get, thankfully, disability for both the kids. Wow. And I think now I'm not 100 percent sure if it's due to their age, because I've read in some places they say it's because they're under six. But even if just like one person out there is considering applying, but not sure because of either income or age or whatever, just do the application. I really wanted to put that out there because you never know. Get on the phone, talk to the person, explain your situation when you're going through the application process. And you might end up in a situation like us where, you know, we were approved. And, and now for the first time ever last week, we picked up our insulin for $0 and zero cents. And yeah, co-pays for, as you can imagine with two kids, even on our insurance from my husband's job, we were still paying 65, $75 each as a copay. Now with this, we still get to keep seeing our same doctors, but the, the disability insurance or the Medicaid will act as a secondary and it picks up the rest of that copay. So now we just saw both of our, we saw our endocrinologist on Friday and zero dollars, zero cents there. And it's just, it's work and you have to have your ducks in a row, get all your paperwork together, you know, plead your case, but maybe you will get somebody who will listen to you and understand and do whatever they can to help push that paperwork through for you and, and find yourself in a situation where you're a lot better off than you were before. So I just wanted to share that, definitely. That's amazing. How long did it take you to, like, figure that out, put it into place, make it happen? Well, so it was, they were diagnosed in April, and we meant to do it right away. But between one thing or another, we got scared off of it. Just hearing people say, oh, we were denied, we were denied, we were denied, don't even bother. So we didn't. And then in August, we put in the application August of this year. And by September... We had our second phone interview and we were approved on that second phone interview Hmm. and um, coverage started in October. So it was a couple months from start to finish. But once we were approved in October, the benefits were retroactive. So they covered us for the months leading up to it. So like Riley had been in the hospital with a stomach flu in September and we just had to fill out a little paper for the Medicaid and then they went back in and they covered what was left over from that hospital bill, even though it was from before the Medicaid had actually kicked in. Jeez, that's terrific. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fantastic. And it's it's not easy. It's tedious. It is time consuming to go through the process. And once you have it, you do have to get things like referrals and things like that. But it's definitely worth it with considering how expensive, you know, diabetic supplies can be, especially Omnipod, Omnipod 5. The kids are on that now. And now we're getting it covered 100% as well for the new year hmm. with the prior authorization of the Medicaid. So there's... It, there's definitely something to be said about just going through the process. And the worst thing that can happen is you get denied. You still get an appeal. Maybe on the appeal you get approved, maybe not. But at least you can say you exhausted every avenue, you know? That's amazing. Good for you. Who yeah. who, who put you onto that? Do you figure it out yourself? Yeah, sort of. So I had been kind of, which I haven't done it for myself. Technically, I qualify for disability with lupus, but it's a very exhaustive process, especially for an adult. Okay. So I had kind of been thinking about like, oh, I wonder if the kids qualify. And especially, you know, like with Riley being autistic, we thought, well, if anyone will qualify, at least she will, but we'll apply for both anyways. 
And that will help us a lot because she has a lot of therapies and each one of those therapies is like 30, 40 bucks a week, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So we said, well, we'll just give it a shot and we'll try it out. And and sure enough, we're getting getting ready to sign her up for equine therapy because the Medicaid covers it. So she'll have like, she'll get to actually go like out to a farm and have like horse riding lessons and get to be like with the animals and stuff like that. Something we never would have been able to afford or even think about it. Yeah. that it, it even existed but through this whole process it was something that came to light they had like art therapy they cover swim lessons tons of different stuff and like i said it'll vary state by state but you won't know until you actually get on the phone and talk to somebody and go through the process of applying what you may and if you don't qualify for that they may have other programs within the state that help that might help you cover costs um, related to the diabetes so i've never ridden a horse it's one of my life's um sadnesses <laughs> Really. Well, you're. Do they have horses? I'm gonna pull like a a you. You know how you're always picking on the Go Canadian ahead. people. Good. Do they even have horses in New Jersey? We have horses. Like, is that a thing? Yeah, the horses own their own <laughs> guns and they run uh, a mob <laughs> thing, obviously, because it's in New Jersey. <laughs> New Jersey's a lovely place. It's is a, it? Yeah, it's a lot of green, a lot of trees. Um, it's a. Uh, there's a lot of farmland and it just, it's got that nine, you know, the I-95 corridor or the, or the turnpike, you know, everything that's sort of clustered around there. I think that's how people see the States. I'm learning this by mm-hmm. the way, by driving Arden to college and back. Okay. Here. So people are going to, so you're only seeing like the stuff right off the highway when yeah, you're getting yeah, off like yeah. on a, a rest stop. <laughs> I'm obviously a, a, a pushover <laughs> because Arden's been in school for 10 weeks and she's home now for the holidays. So mm-hmm. I've now driven to where she goes to school and back again three times. I went down once to see it, right, so that we could, like, take a tour. We stayed for a couple of days, looked around the school, looked around the town, that kind of stuff. So that was once down, once back. I know I'm supposed to say that Arden goes to college in Chicago. But anyway, it was, um like, <laughs> it's like 750 miles one way. So I did it oh once. I did it. You drive basically if you just really hammer and don't stop. It takes like 13 or 14 hours to get there. Wow. Oh. And I did it the first time. I was like, okay, she likes the school, whatever. Then the second time was to take her down. We obviously had to take her there. But Arden traveled like the Queen of Sheba, which I don't know if this is even a thing you're allowed to say anymore because I don't even know what it, I don't even know what it means. It just feels like something that a group of kids at Stanford would tell me I can't say anymore. Uh, but anyway, I don't know what any of that means. I'm just it's a colloquialism, and everyone has to live with it. I don't even know if Sheba is a real place. But the the she I'm just trying to say she had cars full of her belongings, and then right. when she, it's time for her to come home for the holidays, she says I have to bring a lot of these clothes home. I'm like, what's your, some of them I don't need. Some of them are, you know, specific to certain times of the year. I just, I need to get them home. You're going to have to come pick me up. I was like, I was thinking you'd get on a plane, you know? She's like, no, you have to come get me. So I drove again, 750 (laughs) miles, just me by myself. By the way, I was still sick. I basically got a, I got a steroid pack from the doctor. I was like, listen, in lieu of giving me like cocaine so that I can get through this, can you just give me a steroid (laughs) pack so I don't die trying to drive to this place? And so I'm on steroids. I make it down there. Something happens with traffic and I'm not going to, I don't end up getting there when I expect to. So now I'm like going to arrive at like three in the morning and I'm like, well, what am I going to just sit on the street in my car? So I stopped. I got a room. I slept for four hours. I got up. I drive like the last hour and I, um, I pick her up. We drive home in one shot together. And now this is my third time going up and down to this, this, this location. And I'm just like, I'm now driving like a lunatic. Like She's like, are you not worried about getting a ticket or us dying? I'm like, no, I don't even care anymore. So I think the next time I do it, I'm probably going to be going 120 miles an hour. <laughs> Just because oh I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to do it anymore. But she has to go back in 15, 16 days. So I'm going to have to drive down there again and drop her off. And then, cause she's going to go with a different load of clothing. This is our fault for letting her do like a, like a fashion <laughs> thing in school. Just mail, mail it. it. It's can you just sure, do like probably yeah, for do like space. three thousand dollars for what it weighs. I could probably ship. No, it. stuff it. You stuff it into space bags. No, you are right? not. And you are you... not. You are not seeing the picture, Amy, for what the picture is. Okay. <laughs> there's, there's like, there's. I, I'm worried that in the four years she'll be there, I'm going to get too old to lift the stuff. What do you think of that? So, oh my um, god. <laughs> so like, I've, I've kind of been like, hey, Arden, maybe you don't need all this stuff. You know, like try to really 
ration this out a little bit. But I think I'm going to be picking my princess up in a state far, far away for the next three and a half years. <laughs> I'm going to need a new oh, car. I'm going to put too many miles on it. I'm not going to be able to. I don't know. I, I, I Anyway, I'm happy to do it. I actually like it. It's the only time I take off. So it's like four days off for me because I leave and I drive wow. down. And I'm like, oh, this is nice. I'm not working. And, you know. Although I do miss talking to people at some point. Isn't that interesting? Like when you're working, like you're a work from home person or like a stay at home parent, how you don't technically like you have, you can take time off whenever you want, not whenever you want, but it's a little bit easier because you don't have to submit something to a corporation to get approved for time off. Yet you almost never actually take time off to like, just for you to relax. In my experience, there's two different people. There are people who are constantly taking time off and saying they're working. And there are people like me who just like, I just never stop. And it's wrong. I, I'm telling yeah. you the COVID thing, like bringing people home from offices for a certain amount of those people, that's the worst thing that's ever happened to them in their life. Yeah. yeah. Cause they yeah. just don't know how to stop. To function yeah. outside. Yeah. My, my wife's one yeah. of those people. She needs there to be an end to the day. Honestly, she mm. needs somebody to say time to go home. That, and and it, yeah. cause if she doesn't have that, she just keeps working. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. like that. I'm. I will just like I'll get fixated on like something, a task. I'll always find there's always something to do. Like I have two modes. I have uh, lupus is acting up or my body isn't cooperating, so I'm literally like a potato. Mm-hmm. And I I don't even talk to me because I'm not even. I can't hear you. Can't. I'm just a sack of potatoes. <laughs> or I have like super hyperactive. Cannot stop doing anything. I will be painting the walls of this house at two in the morning and rearranging furniture mode. That's, those are my two extremes. <laughs> There's no yeah. in the middle. It's one or the I other. Hear you. I really do. So anyway, I, I like going, don't get me wrong. My son's getting ready to move away. We're never going to see him again. And if you told me that every four months I had to drive somewhere to pick him up, I, I'd, I'd be like, okay. You know? So I, I was thinking about this the other day. You were talking earlier about how you and your husband were talking about like a thing. I was thinking the other day, I really am that person. Like in a in a perfect scenario, I see my family is gathered in the kitchen living area together and us not specifically doing anything, just sort of being in mm-hmm. each other's like orbit a little bit. And I yeah. realize that like that's that's a good day for me. Like I don't I don't care yeah. that we didn't go somewhere or do something or climb a rock or I don't know, whatever people do. Climb a it rock. Sounds like something people do that I would just never <laughs> I would never find. No, just so you know. Uh, so, um, you know, like, oh, we got oh sorry. I mean, like, All it's right. because. Do I owe you? Do I owe you money for being able to hear that? Yeah, fifty cents an episode. You got to buy all twelve or, or sixteen a month, and it's forty eight dollars a year. And if enough of you do it, then I'll be rich, and then we can just make this podcast. I can do the. I can do like a bilingual version for you. Like you can charge like for the two separate. You can have English cursing and Spanish. I cursing. tell you, if I had a, if well, I actually had a million dollars a year, I would. I would make, I would, first thing I would do is hire somebody to translate the pro tip series and all those series and stuff like that. But anyway, that's a no, great a, idea. Trust me. It's my idea. I've had it for 10 years. I bring it up to every company I work with. And they're all like, that's a great idea. And I'm like, do you want to pay for it? And they go, no, not really. I was like, oh, okay, great. Yeah. Anyway, well, I we just, don't have anything we can tap into. Like I'm saying we, like if I'm part of this, mm-hmm. um, you don't have anything, anyone like you wouldn't want to tap into like the group and see if there's somebody within the group. Can I say you feel something like you, honest? You, to you wouldn't know. Let me tell you something honest. Okay. Not yeah, that not that the right. rest of it hasn't been honest, but this is gonna I was be, just gonna say this is gonna be beyond polite. <laughs> People reach out to help me constantly. And right. many of them are lovely. And mm-hmm. some of them are what my grandmother would have called a nudnik. And um <laughs> but they're still well meaning nudniks. Some right. people overestimate, they let their excitement overestimate their ability to help. So yeah. they start off like shot out of a can and I'm like, great, you know, this, you know, do this. Can you make, you know, images for social media? Can you, right? And they're like, oh my God, yeah. Like there used to be this group of people who were like, we're going to listen to every episode and do better show notes for you because your show notes suck. And my show notes do suck. <laughs> Here's what yours is going to say. <laughs> Amy has, Amy has lupus some other stuff wrong with her. Her kids have diabetes and autism. <laughs> like and we I'm barely not, talk about diabetes. Yeah, by the actually. way, and I'm not going to, I'm like, literally won't, <laughs> I won't do much more than that. So this like group of like really motivated people, like for like a month, 
They all took like 10 episodes of the podcast. They listened to them, took notes, and turned them into these amazing show notes. And then they just stopped. And I was like, uh, okay, thanks. Like, But now I have great show notes on 70 episodes, and the rest of them are like Amy has, else. Amy has lupus, yeah. you know? And so, <laughs> and I'm, because I can't do it. Because even when I'm I'm talking to you right now, I don't know what the hell we talked about. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I can't go back and listen just to take notes. Like, I have to have time to sleep. So, anyway, people show up, really wonderful people, very well-intentioned. They really want to help. But for the most part, I'm going to tell you that 98% of them just... They flame out. Yeah, they flame out. And very quickly. And it be, it makes yeah. it just a waste of my time. So, yeah. the, the people who have panned out so far are Isabel who helps with the Facebook page. And yeah. it's only because she, it's like she and I have the same brain about this. Her first contact to me, she was like, I understand what you're doing. And I was like, well, this is either going to end up with me being murdered or me, you know, let me find out what it is she thinks I'm doing. But I'll be damned, like everything I do, like even like kind of like the slick stuff that you don't see, like earlier I brought something up to drag the conversation in a different way. And you're like, it's funny you brought that up. And I thought, no, it's not. I did it on purpose. But, on um, purpose. Yeah, but, um, but like little stuff like that, she sees it all. And she's yeah. the right age and the right temperament and the right intelligence, and the right everything. She just fits. She doesn't want to be the person. She's not like, she doesn't do one thing and then send me a note and go, can you pay me? Because no, I can't. If I could, I would have just hired you, you, you know, like and right. stuff like that. And there's a few people who help on the Facebook group as well. I don't know if they want their name shout out. There's three lovely people that just kind of drop links in and help people when they ask questions. I've never asked them if they want their name on here, so I, I won't just say them. Yeah. And there's a person right now who's a, who's helping me with a couple of specific tasks. and But she'll be gone pretty soon, too. And she's doing a great job like putting together a survey for listeners and a couple of other things. But for those five people... It took me 10 years to find them. And there's 40, 50, I'm not, ex I'm not over-exaggerating people who, who contacted and were very nice and wanted to help and then just sort of disappeared. So anyway. I, I don't help. think anybody really realizes like what we're, we were touching on earlier, how much work it really is yeah, it, and, I, and what it takes to maintain it. Mm -hmm. Cause it's not just doing it once and you get that, that excitement and you, yay, I did the thing. Yeah. Okay, but you got to do it like 800 more times. <laughs> yeah, it's just is what it is. You know, it's not a big deal. But yeah. uh, but I put at least 70 hours into the podcast every week. And wow. like even sitting here right now, I'm like in the last hour and a half, like right before you jumped on, I'm asking people if they want me to be hawking CBD oil because some major company is asking me to be an ambassador. And my first, I emailed them back. I'm like, no, I don't want to. Please leave me alone. I don't want to do that. Oh. And the guy's like, are you sure? Like, you know, your audience might really want it. So I'm like, oh, I'll do a poll. I'll ask people if they want it. If they do, then I guess I'll do it. But I don't want to. I'm asking people if they want a holiday story read for the podcast, which is now a thing people are asking about. I'm thinking of doing a live uh, session like maybe on New Year's Day or somewhere around Ooh. around New Year's where I'm going to go online and every 15 minutes let a new person come on. I want to see how long I can record with a different person for 15 minutes. Like oh, that's cool. I, I don't know, but all that takes, like a podcast roulette. Yeah, just keep going. You know. Yeah. So anyway, I don't know if I'll do that. Well, or I I think we accidentally put a little bit more on your plate the other day with that. There was a post in the group where someone was kind of asking like how to swag like a certain meal. I think it was a Mexican food like dish. And then everybody was just going off on it. And then I tagged Isabel and I was like, or I tagged you as well. And I was like, you guys should make this like a weekly thing. Cause people love this. Like they're like just being able to guess and kind of see everybody's thought process of how they dose and why they dose. I think it gives a lot of insight and actually it sounds like more work, but it might be less work because I'm sure you guys get all the time. Like, Oh, Scott, how do you dose for that? And why do you dose it that way? And I'm sure you get that question. Like, I mean, I get that question on our social media. We're not even out there giving this kind of advice. Yeah. So I can only imagine. Well, here's um, but that might be like a way to facilitate like the group to continue to help each other in a way where you're not necessarily having to be directly overseeing it and like it's you know. a terrific idea. And here's why it won't work. And I can't put any effort into it. <laughs> Those posts pop up and get organic on their own. When you start yeah. turning them into a, a weekly thing or the thing that happens yeah. on Thursday, 
they die right. very quickly. Nobody wants to yeah. be told when to have a thought. And just yeah. because that thread looks so popular that day, you could have moved that that thread three days sooner and it, nobody would have clicked on it. And nobody would have seen it. Yeah. yeah. It's, well, it's the algorithm. And even within like the group itself, like how posts get organized and, and how they show up is a lot it's based on that too. Yeah. So I, I would to, imagine that would affect it a lot. I tend to think of it as an organism that just, it does the things that the organism wants, wants when, it, when it needs yeah. it. And you can't tell it what to do. You know how many times people say to me, you should put up a post for every episode so that we can talk about the episode inside of the post. So we, oh, so we do that. God, no, we do that. <laughs> it's because everybody wants it. They are some of the least looked at posts that exist. Like nobody looks at them. Yeah. And so everything you, people like, think they want that that's another secret about doing something for people is do the opposite. Well, they they don't know <laughs> what they want. If they knew what they wanted, they wouldn't need it. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Like so Yeah, they would you they'd be able to just go and grab Yeah, I get what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, you basically part of my job is to know what you need, not what you think you need. And right. then and and then the podcast because becomes an organism too. You don't think of it that way because you're not thinking of it like that. But the flow of every week or of every month or of every year, I am sort of orchestrating that flow by putting it together. Like it's not as right. you know, I don't I don't well, sometimes I do. Like sometimes I'm like, well, this episode goes on Monday because that episode will feed into this one and this one will bring up this topic, and then next week that topic's gonna come up again. And it'll reinforce it. Like there's, there is that going on. And also because I record in order and then I put my stuff out in the order I record, you are basically getting my concept of diabetes in real time, six months behind when I'm having it, if that makes sense. So right. anyway, there's a lot happening and it's, <laughs> I would love it if somebody could help. But the truth is, is that it, I think it works because it all kind of comes out of my head. So, yeah. Anyway, I can see that, and not because of me, that. but just because there's a fluid idea, and I don't have to go into a meeting and and hear from five people who have a thought about something. Like this thing I'm doing right now, I'm putting a survey together. It'll go out pretty soon. It'll be out for a long time by the time somebody hears this. And it's just to ask some questions to kind of figure out where the podcast is helping people, and you know, etc. The person who's helping me with it said to me, this is the fastest thing I've ever accomplished in like my professional life. And I said, yeah, you know why this is, right? And she goes, why? I said, nobody else has an opinion but me. And like, <laughs> like we're not sitting in a room with six people. We're like, I don't like that question. And then we don't talk about it for an hour and a half and then make another meeting three days from now to come back and look at it again. I go, take that one out, put that one in, say this, say that. This is what we're doing. Then I look at her and go, what do you think? And she gives me her opinion. I go, oh, wow, you're right about that. Change that to that. Put this here. I don't agree with you about that, but good point. And now it's done. And, yeah, you know, it just, it, when you don't have to, I mean, it's too many cooks, I guess, is the easy way to say it. Um, I think it ruins the stew. Yeah. All right. Definitely. Amy, tell your children that I personally, the guy from the podcast, <laughs> said hello to them. Oh, they know. They know Scott. In fact, well, they're out there somewhere in the living room. But Riley wanted to tell you this morning she woke up and she said, I'm going to tell Scott my ABC was 6.4. Oh, she excellent. means her A1C. Oh, I took, I understood. <laughs> Did you, listen, do you want to get her in to tell me before we're done? Yeah, I can do that. Bring, Let me see if she'll be up for bring it. Them in. Hold so on if for one second. If not, then, you know, don't worry. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Bonus coverage. People do want CBD oil. Are you serious? I thought this was a no. Oh, this person takes a quarter of an edible gummy. Severe pain. I use CBE for a compression fracture in my spine. I had a cat with skin cancer. She was on CBD oil. I do the legal kind. It helps me sleep. I would like to learn more about it. I use it for my autoimmune arthritis. It's a lot of people here. But most people said no, by the way, in case you're wondering. I'm talking to myself. Hold on. I'm trying to pick up the headphones. Okay, here we go. I'm not going to talk, Mom. You're not going to talk? You don't have to talk. Yeah, don't talk if you don't want to talk. Put the headphone in your ear so you can hear Scott. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Is this Riley? This is Riley. And Riley, if you don't want to talk, you don't have to talk, okay? Don't say anything. (laughs) Yeah, now she got shy. Oh, that's okay. I'm waiting for that to happen to me one day. Does she remember meeting me? (laughs) She does. Yeah. She does. Probably one of the best things of her life. She was... um, (laughs) 
Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, she was remembering when we were having, when you had the Zoom recently, um, and, you, and you gave her her shout out that you said that there was a secret message for somebody in the room uh, that only one person would understand. And then you said Paw Patrol. Yeah. And she got such a kick out of that. Yeah. Paw Patrol, that should be my, uh, that should be my nickname, honestly. I would. Uh, well, that should be the name of the episode. Yeah, you think so? Did I just name the episode? You might have. Maybe. I'll, I'll Probably it, not, I'll, though. I'll you're gonna down. you're gonna name the episode. Did I just name the episode? <laughs> no, I like. I was Hi. thinking Paw Patrol. Actually, <laughs> I like how she's like. I'm not talking. That's enough of this. I'm leaving the room. Goodbye. I'm le- yeah. No, she's sitting here. She's <laughs> oh, she's, she's sitting here, burying her face in my arms and covering her ears. <laughs> oh, okay. She's like, I don't even want to hear it. No, no it's not. <laughs> but I guarantee you, the minute you get off of the call. She's going to be like, I want to sing a song or she'll come up with something. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that her ABC was 6.4. Is that what it was? 6.4? Her ABC was 6.4. Her ABC was and 6.4. Zoe, her, and Zoe's was um, 6.2. Wow. Good job. That's excellent. Good yeah. That's they're, really cool. they're killing it. Because mom and dad do what mom and dad do. But honestly, if they weren't. If they weren't on top of and and open to things like having the Omnipod and and the constant finger pricks and things like that, the Dexcom, um, then we wouldn't be able to manage as well as we do, honestly. Yeah. But I'm pretending. What are you pretending? I'm pretending to talk to someone. Who are you going to talk to? I'm pretending. Okay, but who are you pretending to talk to? I'm not going to. I saw you when you yeah, have pretending shine. Hey, hey, you know what, Riley? I can't be shining on mommy. Here, listen. Riley? Here, let me, you know what? Let me unplug this. Maybe she can hear your voice. Okay, you're on speaker. Now. Oh, okay. Yeah, Riley, you don't know this, but other people make podcasts, and they're pretending they're talking to some people, too. Oh, no, oh. that didn't work. No, okay. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yeah, I made a silly, well, okay, it wasn't yeah. silly. It was a mean joke, but she, not towards her. I said there are other people who have podcasts, and they're pretending to talk mommy. to people, too. <laughs> that is a mean yeah, joke yeah well it's okay <laughs> it's right. a true joke yeah. but it's a mean joke yeah it's really true you guys have no idea okay well i'm gonna let you go and i'm gonna go i have one life. last thing i need to say because i promised someone i would say it go ahead i, uh, I promised you. guy that i would say I be with you omnipod <laughs> because you have to say omnipod and every time that I say Omnipod, I feel like I'm saying it weird now because so many people say Omnipod. So I told her I would say Omnipod and give her a shout out. Yeah, but isn't it Omnipod? It is Omnipod. Yeah. She says Omnipod, Listen, like with an A. My my very close contact at Omnipod, he says Omnipod. So really, yeah. Every time we're on a call, or we're, I can I can hear his voice in my head right now saying Omnipod. So. <laughs> so many people on TikTok and, and Instagram, even I hear it all the time. And I'm always like, maybe I am saying it wrong. But then I look at it and I'm like, no, it's got an I. It's spelled with an I. So it's Omnipod. Yeah. Would you, would you ever hear Elon Musk say Tesla? <laughs> I have not. No. no it's like Tesla. <laughs> so, Tesla. Oh, like with a Z. I think it's the South African thing. But, oh. it, uh, but still, it's just everybody says stuff differently who cares doesn't matter as long as hey listen yeah. as long as they go to omnipod.com <laughs> forward slash juice box to buy one i don't care there you go what they call it all right go ahead and live your life <laughs> i'm gonna go christmas shopping actually thank you so much for having us and yeah we'll we'll just keep doing what we're doing i guess and just everybody uh manage your diabetes yeah, don't forget a, to change your lancets it's a pleasure you have a, a wonderful family too and i want to i want to thank you for sharing it with me on occasion and with everybody else is very, very nice of you to be this open about it. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank absolutely. you so much. Of course. Well, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Happy holidays. Bye. Have fun driving back and forth. Oh, it's going to be the best part. <laughs> Hold on one second. All right. I want to thank Amy for coming on the show today and sharing her story and telling me about her girls. I also want to thank AG1 drinkag1.com forward slash juice box. Get that free year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first order when you use my link. And don't forget to check out touchedbytype1.org and find them on Facebook and Instagram and give them a follow, touchedbytype1.org. If you're enjoying the Juice Box podcast, please share it with someone else who you think might also enjoy it. 
And don't forget to check out the private Facebook group that now has 41,000 members in it. There is a conversation happening right now that you would enjoy being a part of. Juicebox Podcast, Type 1 Diabetes on Facebook. But let's be honest, I don't care what kind of diabetes you have. Everyone is welcome. The Diabetes Pro Tip Series from the Juicebox Podcast has been professionally remastered for better audio quality. And it will appear again in your podcast player at episode 1000. That's coming up in just a couple of weeks. The Diabetes Pro Tip Series, which is me and Jenny Smith setting you up for success with diabetes. When it comes out, if you've heard it before, listen again. If you've never heard it, I really hope you give it a try. I think it's going to lead to the kinds of successes that you're hoping for.